The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. All we got to do is get truth up on its feet and devils will run and addiction will break and spider webs will loose and people will know what freedom is because you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Give Jesus a big praise. If you have your Bibles, I'd love for you to open them with me to the book of Isaiah, the 59th chapter. Verse 2 says, but your iniquities have separated you from God, from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. And then he gives the reason why in verse 3, for your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue has muttered perversity. No one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil, listen, and bring forth or birth iniquity. And then verse five, they hatch vipers eggs and weave spiders webs. He's talking about vipers or snake eggs. And then he says spider webs. He who eats their eggs dies, and from that which is crushed, a viper breaks out. The webs will not become garments, nor will they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and their acts of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. There it is again. Notice this. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Verse 14, I promise this is a good news message, but sometimes you got to go through the death before you get to the resurrection. Some things need to die this morning. Verse 14, listen to the state. There's so much sin in the people that it's, that it's affecting the whole state of the nation. And he says, justice is turned back. Righteousness stands far off. Listen to this saying, truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. So truth fails and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. But verse, the last part of that verse says, but the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no justice. And then it talks about intercession. And I want to quickly go to verse 20. But here comes the answer now to all of the stuff that I've been reading. The Redeemer will come to Zion. It's the church. And those who turn back from tra transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them, my spirit who is, who is upon you. And my word which I will put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, your children's children, says the Lord from this time and forevermore. I want to talk to you about snake eggs and spider webs. And I guess if I had a title is let's stand truth up on its feet again. He said the dilemma is that God has hid his face from you because your hands are stained with blood. 1972, Roe versus Wade. Abortion became illegal in America, and since that time, there have been over 50 million babies aborted. Truly, truly, our hands are polluted with blood. It's amazing that you can crush an eagle egg and you will be sent to prison for one year and have to pay a $10,000 fine. But a baby eagle is worth more than a baby human being in many people's eyes in America. In verse 5, they hatch snake eggs or viper eggs and they weave spiders' webs. He who eats the eggs dies. People are swallowing, the prophet was saying, poisonous snake eggs. The snake eggs represent deadly philosophies of man hatched by the granddaddy serpent himself, Satan, in the Garden of Eden. 
straight from the incubators of hell, there are snake eggs that are being hatched in the minds of a whole generation of deadly philosophies that say, live any way you want to live, do anything you want to do, all roads lead to heaven, any God you pick, pick one, try to be a good person, do nice things, and all roads lead to heaven. That is a snake egg hatched in this generation that is being eaten by a whole generation that live and let live, and everybody do what's right in your own eyes. There's no such thing as morality and all of that. That's just old stupid stuff from an old book called the Bible. And people are swallowing those poisonous snake eggs. And he says their thoughts have become evil. And then the Bible said, not only are they hatching snake eggs, vain philosophies of man doing away with the truth of the word of God. He said, and they weave spiders webs. Like a spider, Satan weaves sticky traps across the path of people, of young people and dads and moms. And I'm 55 years old, and I, I thought it would get easier to live for the Lord. And I find myself needing God's grace more at 55 than I've ever needed it in my life with all of the responsibilities that I, and I, I was in prayer the other day and I said, Lord, if I'm fighting, how in the world are the people doing in the pews? Let's be real. Let's be honest. We better be real and say, God, I need your help. I need your strength. I need your grace. I don't want to become a professional plastic Christian who pretends one thing and doesn't live it the rest of the week. Oh, I'm going to preach. It doesn't matter if you want to. You, you sit there. You just sit there. They weave spiders' webs. See, Satan catches people in webs of alcoholism, webs of drug addiction, webs of pornography. Webs of fornication, webs of homosexuality and immorality. He injects his poison. The victims get entangled. First, he poisons the mind through snake eggs, and he gets you to thinking that the word of God doesn't matter anymore. And once he gets the snake eggs in your head, then outwardly he tries to entangle your body with spider's webs. That when you get entangled in them, he injects his poison into your spirit and sucks the life out of them. Spiders are all beasts of prey. I think the wording of this text is so, so interesting. These snake eggs in the head and then spider webs that the enemy lays like traps that people get entangled in and they can't get and they try to get the web off and they get more entangled and more entangled and suddenly satan like a like a spider comes there's there're different kinds of spiders there's a spider called the wolf spider that chews that chases its victims there's a spider called the jumping spider that makes a pounce like a cat against its victim. There's a spider called the crab spider and it uses the environment. It can change its colors and it uses the environment to surprise attack. But all spiders trap mostly their victims in its web. And then once it's trapped in the web, once the mind is taken over, the mind's not being renewed in the word of God, but the philosophies of, of snake eggs are being planted with every movie and every TV show and everybody and even, even Christians who are compromising. Suddenly all of those things start getting in your head. And if that's not enough, then the spider webs, the enemy sets a trap and you touch it and suddenly you're in spider's webs and he's got the body bound, he's got the mind mind bound. And then Satan comes like a spider with poison. And he just, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the little insects that get caught in spider's webs, but it's just a shell of the life that used to be there because what they do is they, they just drain the life out and there's nothing left but an empty shell. And that's what the enemy's trying to do to every believer. I'm not preaching to people who are lost. I'm preaching to church people. 
I'm preaching to church people who have snake eggs that are being hatched in their head. You're eating, you're eating snake omelets and you're taking it in and what you take in, it will hatch in your head. You can't help it if a bird flies over your head, but you can stop it from building a nest in your hair and hatching eggs. And what I'm saying is if you are taking stuff in, it's a matter of time before the eggs hatch. We'll go back into the message in just a moment, but I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's helping me get the critical message out surrounding my newest book called Love Like You've Never Been Hurt. It's a book that I believe is going to change people's lives. It's a book about forgiveness. It's a book about restart your heart and reconcile with your family, your loved ones, and people that you have been separated from. It's critical that we love. It's critical that we forgive. And that's what, it, what I believe God's doing in this hour. It's a message that is on time for so many families that are going through crisis. I know there's life beyond hurt and bitterness waiting for you. We're getting testimonies daily of lives that are being touched. And this book is available right now wherever books are sold. But this month, we're making it a very special offer when you sow a specific seed to help us preach the gospel around the world. Here's my announcer to tell you how. It's often the people we love most that can hurt us the worst. It's in these moments that we have a choice, a choice to live in hurt and bitterness or to forgive. There is a life beyond hurt and bitterness waiting for you. It's a life of freedom and joy the abundant life that Jesus promised. And to reach it, we need to learn to love like we've never been hurt. This month, Jensen Franklin wants to encourage you to reach beyond hurt and find the hope that God has waiting for you. With your gift of $60 or more this month, you may request your copy of Jensen Franklin's brand new book, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt. And because of the life-changing message in this book, we want to send you an additional copy to pass on to a friend or family member who's in need of a fresh start. Don't wait. Visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv. It's time to restart your heart and begin living a life of freedom, a life full of love and forgiveness. If we don't watch it, we're going to lose our children. We're going to lose our children's children because the more you let go, the more you lose. You get entangled. You get entangled. You get entangled. You swallow more and more lies and philosophies of man. Replace the truth of God's word, the conviction of God, the standard of God with the philosophies of man. And suddenly life means nothing. Marriage means nothing. Family means nothing. Home means nothing. Church means nothing. Bible means nothing. It's just some stuff in your life when you need an emergency situation instead of leaving with Jesus and walking with Jesus and having vital relationship with Jesus. We've weaved spider's webs and Romans 1 says that God gave them up. There came a point where they took in so many vain philosophies and imaginations, and then they got so entangled in their sin in Romans 1 that he said, I gave them up. And then it says later in that same chapter, and he gave them over. The greatest threat is not the enemy on the outside or the enemy beside you. Your greatest threat is the enemy above you. If God himself ever decides to turn you over and turn you to, over to that thing that you are demanding that you have, that's when it's bad. The spider's web is real. Satan repackages old weapons for a new generation. Satan repackages old sins for a new generation. And every time Satan opens his mouth, he's lying. This is good. This is good. And you get entangled in that web. And then you need something else. So you go to another drug. You go to another high. You go to another affair. You go to another thing. You go to another website. You go to another deeper sin. And before you know it, your life is messed up. You don't have any relationships. You don't have any joy. You're, you're drowning in addiction. It doesn't happen overnight. The eggs hatch if you keep putting them in up there. 
You better protect and preserve your house. You better not make room for Satan in your home, in your marriage, in your family. The enemy wants us to become the walking dead. And he said, listen to it. He said, they have snake eggs in their head, spider webs they're being trapped in. And then he makes this powerful truth and statement. He says, truth has fallen in the streets. The shock of sin is gone. Jeremiah said, they can't even blush anymore. There's no such thing. As, as modesty, justice and truth have fallen. Justice stands afar off and truth has stumbled into the street. Truth has been tripped up and chloroformed by, I'm going to say it like I want to, by liberal preachers who don't ever stand up and preach the truth of God's word. There is a difference between clean and unclean. There is a difference between righteous and unrighteous. There is a difference between holy and unholy. And we've got to preach it. We've got to lift truth back up on our feet. We've got to lift truth to stand tall again in our nation and in our families and in our church and in our life. He said in, 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 in Isaiah 59, the Redeemer's going to come and those will turn from their transgression. The answer to the dilemma is not to get a broom and start sweeping spider webs and stomping out snake eggs. The answer is is to stand truth on its feet again. And if we'll stand with Jesus, and Jesus is truth, he is the person of truth, the Redeemer shall come to Zion. Then he says, and the Holy Spirit, the next verse says, this is my covenant with them, my spirit who is upon you. Notice that there's the person of truth, he needs to stand tall again in your life because he's tripped. He's fallen. You pushed him aside. You've made truth stand way out and you've been eating snake eggs and you've been entangled in things that you shouldn't be entangled in. And the scripture said that, that Zion will come back. The person of truth, Jesus is the answer. He will take care of the spider webs. He'll take care of the snake eggs. But then it says, and my spirit, notice that's the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. You have the person of truth. Then my spirit's going to come on you. The power of truth. The anointing of truth. The spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit. He's not going to lie to you. He's not going to let you go down a road of deception. He's going to lead you in a holy walk. My spirit is upon you. And notice this. My words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth. That's the proclamation of truth. He said, if you want this thing to be fixed. When he, the spirit of truth has come, he'll teach you all things. And my words, notice what he said, will not depart the proclamation of truth. He said, if you see the enemy coming and putting snake eggs and philosophies of man, trying to bombard your mind, saying it's not real, saying it doesn't matter. And what did, and then you have, you have spider webs, things that people are getting entangled in. He said, the answer to it is stand truth back up in your life and then allow the Holy Spirit to come back in fullness in your life. He'll clean you out. Then I'll begin a proclamation of truth, but it doesn't, it's not just you. Notice he said, my word shall not depart out of your seed. That's your children and your seed seed. That's your children's children. If we preach the person of Jesus, if we receive the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, if we let it pour forth from us with a proclamation of truth like hot lava, 
You don't have to stomp the snake eggs out. You don't have to sweep the spider webs away. All we got to do is get truth up on its feet and devils will run and addiction will break and spider webs will loose and people will know what freedom is because you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. If you know I'm preaching it, give Jesus a big praise. Come on and praise him just a minute. I'm almost done. Mm. What we have to do is come in seasons and times in our life and stand and say, God, I've come again to say, search me and try me and see if there's any wicked way in me. Creating me a clean heart and a right spirit. And when you can stand and there's no unconfessed sin, and you can look and say, I turn from everything I know to be wrong, there's a real warning here. For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, how many of you have had God clean you up when he saved you? Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Watch this. They are again entangled in them. Now, he's not talking to people out in the world. He's saying after you have knowledge of Jesus Christ and you have escaped the pollution and God pulled you out of the sewer you were in and set you free, but then you go back and notice the word again, get entangled. That's that spider web in them. Notice the, here's the, here's the, here's the way the enemy operates. He can't overcome you until he first entangles you. So he gets you to thinking with snake eggs that you can compromise, that it doesn't matter and everybody's doing it. And don't look at your friends, college students, look at your friends. Oh, everybody call that old stuff you raised in over that free child. Those people are nuts. This is the real, the, this crowd here, they're enlightened. But once you've known the knowledge and tasted, and then you go back to the very stuff that God set you free from, and you again are entangled. It was wrong then, but now you've, you, you've changed your mind because you hadn't been filling your mind with the words. You've been filling it with junk. And you're entangled again. Notice what it says, and overcome. If the enemy's getting you entangled, his next step is to overcome you, your family, your marriage, your home. I can handle it. I can handle it. I'm different. I can handle it. Entangled, then overcome. Notice, and the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. And then the next verse is stunning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb. He gives you an illustration. A dog returns to his vomit. A pig is going back to the mire in the slop that he was brought out of. Folks, this is serious stuff. And if we don't watch it, there is such a, you cannot remain neutral. You cannot just be kicked back Christian in the 21st century. There is a real divide coming. You're either going to be wheat or you're going to be tear. You're either going to be on fire for God or you're going to be playing lukewarm Christianity. And I, I'm not here. I'm not a mean preacher. I'm a positive guy. I'm an up guy. Y'all know that. But the Lord spoke to me and he said, Stand truth up on its feet today. And I will clean out the cobwebs. And I will crush the snake eggs. And I'll set my people free for one generation to another generation to another generation. Does anybody believe in freedom that comes through the truth? Well, I believe this message is strong, but it's exactly what people need to hear. You need to get back to God. You need to stand truth up on its feet again. 
You need to let the Holy Spirit power come and the spirit of truth and the person of truth and the proclamation of truth set you free today and crush the snake eggs and break the spider's webs off of your life. Satan is coming with great fierceness against people, against young people, against marriages and homes and families and their people are entangled in sin and iniquity and evil. But there is a cleansing that comes. There is a difference that comes when Jesus washes you and fills you with his spirit. This is your moment. Pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. Say those words. Jesus, I surrender to you. I give you my life. I stand truth up on its feet in my house and in my life and in my family. I want to please you. I want to love you. Set me free from the spider's webs and the snake eggs. I receive the spirit of truth and you shall know the truth and the truth sets you free right now. Free from addiction, free from fear, free from sin and sorrow and hopelessness and suicidal thoughts. In the name of Jesus, you are valuable and you are free. You are a child of God. Pick up that phone. You need somebody to keep praying with you right now. I've got prayer partners standing by ready to pray with you. Call us. We want to pray with you today. Before we leave, I want to let you know how much your prayers and financial support mean to this ministry. If this ministry has been a blessing, listen, sow a seed, give some resources and help us go this month into the ministry that God's called us to go all over the world. We believe every seed you sow, you can see a mighty harvest back in your life. This month, the ministry is offering my brand new book, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt with a special resource for your gift of support. I believe... supernatural love in your life. It's the only love that'll change your life forever. My announcer's going to tell you how to get your copy today. Thank you so much for being a blessing to so many. It's often the people we love most that can hurt us the worst. It's in these moments that we have a choice, a choice to live in hurt and bitterness or to forgive. There is a life beyond hurt and bitterness waiting for you. It's a life of freedom and joy the abundant life that Jesus promised. And to reach it, we need to learn to love like we've never been hurt. This month, Jensen Franklin wants to encourage you to reach beyond hurt and find the hope that God has waiting for you. With your gift of $60 or more this month, you may request your copy of Jensen Franklin's brand new book, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt. And because of the life-changing message in this book, we want to send you an additional copy to pass on to a friend or family member who's in need of a fresh start. Don't wait. Visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv. It's time to restart your heart and begin living a life of freedom, a life full of love and forgiveness. This program has been sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry.